so that he finds out about the divorce filing from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. If I wanted to leak it, I could have done a lot more with it. But you testified earlier in this trial that you didn't know how to leak things. Remember I don't. That? Amber had a slight decolor uh, discoloration on both eyes. If you're handing somebody a checklist that lists every single symptom of PTSD, you're essentially teaching them all the little nuances that we're looking for to give that diagnosis. In these pictures that were taken before you got on the train ride, where you claim that Miss Heard gave you a black eye, you have the exact same shadow or sunburner mark under your left eye. He had this like black mesh tank top, not tank top, but it was like a meshy kind of shirt on. And Did you ever wear a mesh shirt? <laughs> no, I would uh, absolutely never wear that. Is it your testimony that she showed you photos of her injuries shortly after the alleged event? Somewhere in the period while she still had injuries, she showed me photos, but she also came in and showed me in person. So which is it? Which one was taken on December 15, 2015, or May 21st, 2016? If you remove the redacted metadata, you can find out. It's right there. Or if you're telling the truth, you would know. Oh, hi there. Hello, hello, hi. It's my face again. Swoop! So, as most of you know, we've been covering the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial, and I've been doing individual deep dive docs, analyzing some of the most crucial allegations, and taking sworn testimonies and evidence from this trial and the UK trial, kind of laying them side by side, to point out all the inconsistencies that may have gone unnoticed. So, if you like deep dives, this is the place to be. Now today I want to go over what I consider the most damning evidence on both sides that I think the jury will be focusing on as they deliberate to reach a verdict. Now we know there's a lot of dramatic testimony that just snatches the headlines, but I actually also think there's very damning testimony from what I call sleeper witnesses. These are the people who kind of slipped through the cracks and could wind up being the real deciders that make or break Johnny's case and Amber's counterclaim. So real quick, a word from today's sponsor, Fetch Rewards and then we will jump straight into the damning evidence. So Fetch Rewards is a super easy to use free app where you earn free rewards on literally anything that you buy. I am not joking, it is a free app that gives you free rewards like Amazon gift cards, Ulta, Target, it is awesome. So all you do is scan any receipt or e-receipt you have, literally any receipt, no matter where you shop or what you buy, and you earn points instantly. You can scan receipts, redeem points, and grab your rewards right from your mobile device in seconds, and it is super easy. So here's how it works, you just take any receipt you have, like I just bought a bunch of groceries and you tap to scan and take a photo of your receipt and then it instantly gives you points for your receipt. And I promise it does not matter where the receipt is from or what's on it, you just scan it, get points, done and done. <laughs> they also have a section where if you purchase these specific items, like this dog food for example, you'll instantly get 5,000 points or maybe 400 points for some donuts. <laughs> Bitch, <laughs> sign me up. And so then all those points turn into gift cards for places like Amazon, Starbucks, or your favorite restaurant. And they don't have to be printed receipts. This works for e-receipts as well. Like you can shop on Amazon, enter your e-receipt, get points, and then use those points to get Amazon gift cards. You see what I'm saying? What? So if you like free apps that give you free gift cards, check out my link in the description to download Fetch Rewards for free and use code SWOOP to get an instant 3,000 points when you scan your first receipt. You are absolutely going to love this app, I promise. Okay, back to the doc. Okay, we're gonna jump into the most damning evidence of this trial. Now, I know that many of us have our own bias, right? And many are Team Johnny, as there is a mountain of recorded evidence of Amber literally admitting to hitting and abusing him. But I want us to try and approach this the way a jury is required to, and that's to weigh the evidence on both sides, to try to get to the root of the truth. <laughs> and bitch, it ain't gonna be easy, okay? Like, a root canal is less painful than this mess. Now, let's remember, there's no such thing as a perfect victim. Survivors, myself included, can relate to Johnny's side and some to Amber's side based on their own experiences, so let's not invalidate other victims sharing their stories. Let's look at all the angles, and if you think that there's evidence that should be on this list, leave me all the comments. I want to hear your thoughts. I couldn't possibly cover everything, so let me know. And with that, like Harry Styles and his quest for watery fruit, let's dig in. Hey, what's the truth? 
security judge thing. Tell the world, Johnny, I joined that man. I I am a victim of people to that spot. And yes. I on the plane here from Purple from Rio. You were losing your marbles. I'm the one who came to you and said, Listen, calm down, please calm down. And you were blaming me. You need to let me be able to be mad. Sometimes you're gonna make me mad. I'm a human. I cannot live where it's like. Well, then, you, you haven't gotten better about that. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had three physical fights in the last month and a half, two months. Sure. If things get yeah. physical, we have to separate. Yeah. yeah. Johnny, again, there's many recordings of him saying, we have to separate if it gets physical, and she's saying, no, we don't. There can be no physical violence. Boom. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. All of these things, I think, stack pretty high against Amber's case and against Amber saying that Johnny was the sole abuser. That, that makes me not feel for lack of a better word, safe within the relationship. That is a very powerful statement, and I don't think that there is a better word. Safe is the absolute perfect word for someone if you are being attacked physically, verbally, or otherwise. You're not safe in that relationship, and I think that will really resonate whether with the jury or public opinion. Okay, let's dig into some of the recordings because these are particularly bad. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad, I lose it. Saying that she can't promise that she won't get physical, that she won't become physically violent with him, might be one of the most damning recordings in this trial. I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. After a few times I opened, you, you know, you just, commit, you just kept going, you just kept going, kept going. I tried to close the door three times. Please, please, Maybe. just don't, let, you know, and then wait. And then, then I, 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 I accidentally, I swear, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. And I didn't, I, you know, I didn't mean to do that. And I bent down and you either pushed or you kicked. I think you kicked the door so that it would I hit me. And it hit no, me. I, wait, I didn't wait. mean to. Wait. I didn't know it that. It hit was... me in the fucking head. But I did not mean to do that. Right. I don't know what you're talking I was about. bent down behind the door. I did not do anything to her. I did not kick a, a door or push a door so that it would hit you. I did not. I, I swear that I, I don't even, that did not, it was not my intention. I, I think, I never did that. That wasn't on purpose. I might have done it on accident. Okay. But. So let's say that was an accident. I, I then stood up. They both admit here to doing something that hurt the other person that they both say was accidental. It feels real, it feels like they're both trying to have an honest conversation about what happened. And I stood up, and then you fucking clocked me. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. You didn't um, mean to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I didn't punch mean, me in the jaw. I meant to hit you. And I, I, I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do remember. I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't mean the door? No, God, no, I didn't. I'm, but punching me in the in the jaw. I didn't. Did. Okay, I'm sorry. I hit you. I did mean to hit you, but it was in a res, in response. I just reacted in response to my foot. I just reacted, and I'm sorry. It's below me. Your foot? Well, that was why you punched me. Yeah. This is where it, the, the recording kind of falls off for me with Amber. I don't personally think that the clocking him in the face after the door thing was strictly tied to her toes. I think that was aggression, vindictive, and I think she was intentionally trying to hurt him with the punch. And now we're gonna play probably one of the most infamous recordings from this trial. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, punch hit you. Me across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. First, I want to point out here that the the, the, the text that was on here, the transcription is incorrect. Uh, I, she very firmly says babe here, and that will be very important, um, as I will point out later on when we get to the Australia finger incident. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you, even a lot of fights have been around a long time. I know. Yeah, no, I, when you have a closed you fist. Get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not deck you. I was hitting you. you can't I don't know what me. the motion of my actual hand was, but your 
fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. That's the difference you between me and you. You're a f***ing baby. Because you start you physical are fights. You're a baby! Because you, the because you start me. physical fights. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. So I had because to get the f*** out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing. The big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. I gotta say, that recording is really difficult for me to listen to um, just from experiences that I've had. The tone in Amber's voice, the, the anger, the rage, the dismissiveness, calling him a baby, splitting hairs with the you're not punched, I was hitting you, it is all language that I fully expect from an abuser and from someone who does this regularly, who is openly gaslighting their victim. It's really difficult, you know, I've tried to remain unbiased to a degree in regards to Amber, but when I hear this recording in particular, it literally does something to my soul. And the reality is, for any of you watching, leaving something before it comes physical, before you're attacked, if you can safely leave, that's not only admirable, it's the best thing to do for your safety. Now, this is one of those pieces of evidence that I think is potentially pretty damning to Johnny's side. Now, remember, the, the whole, this is a defamation trial, right? So for the jury to find in favor of Johnny, they have to find no evidence that Johnny uh, abused Amber at all. If they find, again, one piece of evidence that suggests or shows that he did, then Johnny's whole case is gone. So we have this recording of Johnny acknowledging, I headbutted you in the forehead that doesn't break a nose. Oh, the end all be home. The wow. sort of offensive thing. You can throw a punch, yeah, you, screaming is okay. You can headbutt somebody screaming, but don't scream. Huh? Head you on the f Come on, Forehead. That doesn't break him now. So that is Johnny allegedly admitting to headbutting Amber. Now, could Johnny argue that it was self-defense? Of course. Could Johnny argue that he was just placating her in this uh, recording? Yes. And that has been Johnny's defense of these types of recordings that are particularly damning to him. Was this him admitting to abuse that was proactive and not reactive? And of course, we have probably the biggest bombshell recording of this whole trial, which is Tell the World. I had a I had a, a I, mineral can, a jar, a can of mineral spirits thrown at my nose. I, I, you can please tell people that it was a fair fight and see what the, see what the jury judge thinks. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I was hit in the face and yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. It's how many people believe or side with you. Tell them, Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, a man, I'm a victim too of domestic violence. I think this is probably one of the most resounding, impactful, damning pieces of evidence against Amber. Uh, but I'm going to show you two sides that the jury could potentially look at this. Um, now, first of all, Amber denoting that Johnny is a man and then proceeding to say, see what judge, what jury is going to believe you, that obviously perpetuates this terrible idea that people have had in society that men cannot be victims. And I do think that Amber was intentionally threatening that. And so that is very damning to Amber. Now, if the jury were to question this against Johnny, the one thing that I would say, which I haven't heard anybody else point out, is in uh, the quote of what Amber says here, she says, tell them, uh, I'm a victim too of D V. This two word right here could be something that the jury gets stuck on because I am a victim too could sound like she's saying she's a victim of DV from him in instances and that he's a DV victim too, implying that he has physically assaulted her. Uh, again, we're not getting into mutual abuse. I don't believe that's a thing, but I'm saying that this is what a jury could come down to and say, oh, he didn't argue too, which means maybe he assaulted her, and what does that mean for the defamation case? 
Now, we are going to get into some of Amber's testimony regarding the white stuff and the alleged uh, staged photos, because that, that's going to come up, honey. And do you know what is in these two glasses that have kind of a gold-colored colored liquor? Uh, yes, they're different, actually. It's confusing. They're different. Uh, different liquids. The one in the back in the larger glass is um, Tabs or Barocca, that's what they're called. And then the brown liquid in the shot glass is um, Johnny's liquor. I don't know what it's called. But so first of all, I, I, I gotta just personally point out that the liquid in this glass looks, bitch, it looks the same as the one in this glass. We never gonna know, okay? She can say whatever she wants to about these two liquids. They look the same, Amber. Uh, we also have the uh, tampon applicator where uh, Amber had testified that her own sister Whitney taught Johnny how to use the white stuff with a tampon applicator, which the big question there, bitch, is if Whitney is saying that her sister is being abused by this man, especially when he is under the influence, then bitch, why would you be teaching him how to uh, get under the influence? I have questions, okay? Emily D. Baker, I have questions. The other thing that I wanna point out here is that this is Amber's mug. She is seen uh, holding this in the assaulting of the cabinets TMZ video. It, it's actually in several of these photos of alleged aftermath of uh, assaults that Amber supplied these photos. So it is curious. Could it be a coincidence? Of course it could. Now, did you end up sending a copy of this picture to Rocky Pennington that day? I did. I sent it to my best friend at the time and, you know, I was like, look at my morning. Objection. Like, this is about to be so ridiculous. All right. And is this the text message, the email that you sent to Rocky with this picture? Yes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, real quick, Petty University, roll the intro. I think it's really funny because she redacts here the message that Amber sent to Rocky and the message, as we will hear her testify, says, And you sent this picture to your friend Rocky Pennington as well, didn't you? I sure did. And when you sent it, you said, quote, look at my morning or something like that. Is that right? Yay for mornings. Yay for mornings. So it was really interesting that Amber's side needed to redact that because bitch, I am telling you. You have a habit of sending stage photographs to your friend Rocky, don't you? I had a habit of communicating with my best friend about what was going on in my life. I think she's trying to imply that it's like, yay for mornings, look what I have to deal with. Johnny is, you know, hitting the white stuff again. But bitch, really, the way I would interpret that is yay for mornings means yay for mornings. Look what I'm about to partake. I'm about to dabble in the, the, the yum yum. You know what I mean? And also like, I don't think people know this, but yay is actually a slang for the white stuff. I'm just putting that out there, yay for mornings could literally be white stuff for mornings. One could interpret this a couple of ways, right? That Amber is celebrating that she's about to have a morning. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is so suspicious to me. I don't know, like, let me know in the comments what you think about this, but if I see the message yay for mornings and someone sends me this picture, I'm gonna be like, oh, you about to, I guess you gonna have a good time with your white stuff. Ugh. I do want to point out really quickly, there are actually two versions of this photo. Only one, I believe, was shown in court, but there do exist two. One is without Johnny's box right here. And then here's the box right there. And I just, that feels like this photo was manipulated to convey something that might not be the truth. Now, another piece of very damning evidence, I think, for Amber's side, and again, I'm not, like, I'm not going out of my way to try to stack the deck against one person or the other, but there just happens to seem to be quite a lot more stacked against Amber. This is in regards to her literally using the same evidence photo in two different incidents. You cannot use the same photo twice. I feel like this was one of those smoking gun moments. Camille came in hot. She coming in with the hot sauce once again. So I'm going to start with the cross. You testified that this was taken in the downstairs of the main apartment on December 15th, 2015. Do you recall that testimony? Uh, yes, I believe so. 
So it's your testimony that Defendant's Exhibit 512 reflects damage to the penthouse, penthouse 5, that occurred during the December 15, 2015 incident, right? I'm just not sure from which incident this is a picture of since I'm only looking at Even a though partial your floor. Was asking you questions about December 15th, 2015, and then admitted this test, this picture into evidence. Defendants exhibit, you are the defendant. Number 512 was admitted into evidence in this court. You testified that this was the result of damage that occurred on December 15th, 2015. Yes or no? Uh, I just need to orient myself because I'm just looking at a picture of a partial no, picture of a. No, Ms. Heard, you didn't just so look I at can't. a picture, you looked at your testimony. I so basically Amber is trying to say because she can't see metadata or she can't see the full picture that she can't say which incident this w was in regards to but the problem here is that these photos were submitted by Amber as evidence to these incidents and she testified to them and we go pull up that testimony real quick but let's uh let's let Camille finish you've seen this photograph as well right I have so this is a photograph that was uh, used for the December 15th incident, and this was a photo that was used in a May 21st incident. As, a, as you can see, it's the same freaking photo. You testified that this photograph reflected spilled wine in Penthouse 5 on May 21st, 2016, didn't you? I, again, I don't know because I'm looking at a partial picture of a floor, so unless you remove the metadata you've covered up, we could then tell. If you I remove, didn't cover it up, Your Honor. That's how it's in evidence. That's how it's in evidence. Next question. Well, the metadata next to it is so that Ms. Heard, to avoid this Ms. Heard, sort of there is no question pending, and I would appreciate it if you wouldn't be making argument to the jury. Sorry, it's I thought you would ask me about it. One thing you ain't gonna do is pull up on Miss Camille, okay? She will cut you down if you are inappropriate, and it was inappropriate for Amber to be trying to make an argument to the jury there when there was no pending question. Let's look at your direct testimony from um, the third day. Do you see where Ms. Bredehoff asked you to describe for the jury what took place on May 21st, 2016? I see that. Okay. And do you see that you're testifying that Defendant's Exhibit 725, which is reflected on the right side, reflects spilled wine on the floor in Penthouse 5? That's correct. Okay. And Defendant's Exhibit 512 and 725 seem to be different versions of the same picture, don't they? That's correct. Okay. So which is it? Which one was taken on December 15th, 2015? or May 21st, 2016. And y'all know Swoop be nosy. Swoop need to dig through the facts. I pulled up her segments of testimony for both of these usages of this photo. So on one day when she's talking about May 21st, she testifies to this. Does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes, um, that's downstairs in the main. Wait, let me, let me move the admission of it. It's uh, downstairs in the main apartment. Here is her testimony about the other incident with the same photo. And let the record reflect this was shown to Officer Signs and Haddon in, as deposition exhibit 37 to their depositions. I'm sorry, I have to take a pause there because not only was this same photo used to describe two different incidents of alleged abuse and Amber testified to both of them, now we're finding out that this photo and this discrepancy was shown to the two officers who arrived on the scene of the May 21st incident. They were shown this photo in their deposition. So if they were shown a false photo, then that is a significant problem for Amber's side because I don't know if it was a mistake, I don't know if it was intentional and they thought they'd get away with it, who knows? That is a huge problem that that is being shown as evidence to officers which would then be impacting their testimony and potentially trying to influence the officer's testimony as to whether or not they themselves witnessed damage to the property or to Amber. And the thing is, that that picture may be accurate to one of these incidents and maybe that emotion there is real but because it's been used in two different things I and I would think as a jury would have to call into question are you telling the truth about this so which is it which one was taken on December 15th 2015 or May 21st 1st 2016 if you remove the redacted metadata you can find out it's right there or if you're telling the truth you would know 
And now you probably heard about it. You probably saw the guy from TMZ, formerly, showing up to testify in regards to the video of Johnny Depp assaulting some cabinets. And this again would be very damning evidence against her case. Look, you be the judge, okay? Tips are verified. Um by an extensive process, if they come in through our tip line, we have to verify who sent it. And how long did that process typically take? If we receive a tip through the tip line, um, it could take a while because if it was media, such as photos or videos, that would need to be extensively verified to ensure that the person sending it is the copyright holder. What was the first time you recall working on an assignment related to Ms. Heard? Uh, I believe it was May 27th, 2016. And what was your role in that assignment? For that, it, Ms. Hurd was filing a uh, restraining order, so um, I dispatched camera people to that location. Under what circumstances would you normally send paparazzi to a courthouse? Um, we would only ever send people there if we had been tipped off that something was occurring and there was somebody present there. They had to have been tipped off to show up there. The question is, was it Amber who brought her publicist? What was your team of paparazzi supposed to do while they were at the LA courthouse on May 27th, 2016? Their objective was to capture her leaving the courthouse and then she was going to sort of stop and turn towards the camera to display the bruise on the right side of her face, the alleged bruise. Were you involved in any other stories involving Ms. Heard? Um, on the 12th, we received a video um, depicting um, Johnny Depp um, slamming some cabinets that was captured by Ms. Heard. Can you describe to the jury how you received the video on August 12, 2016? Yes, the video was sent in through our email tip line. So you received a link. What was in that link? In that link was the video of Johnny Depp smashing the cabinets. How long does it take to post a story after media has been received by TMZ? After media has been received, um, it could take any length of time depending on who owns the copyright. And how long does it take to copyright something TMC has received through the tip line? Uh, it can take a while because you have to extensively verify that that person owns the copyright. For, for those of you who might not understand inherently how copyright and this types of things works, if you are the one who hits record on a video that you are capturing, that makes you the copyright holder. Therefore, Amber was by default, because she's the one who made the recording, she is by default the copyright owner. The only way that TMZ could have gotten clearance to use that video would come from the copyright right owner, meaning it had to come from either Amber or if she sold or gave over her copyright of the video to someone in her legal team or a friend or a third party. How long does it take for TMZ to obtain a copyright or something received directly from a source? Something in the realm of 15 minutes just to do what I described before, which is putting bumpers and a bug on something and write the article and post it. It's pretty fast. How much time had passed from the time you received the kitchen cabinet video to the time it was posted on TMZ? About 15 minutes. And what does that mean? It means the TMZ owns the copyright to it. Have you seen the kitchen cabinet video that was played in this trial? I have, yes. How does that video that was played in this trial compare to the one you received on August 12, 2016? Um, when I had clicked the direct link that we received and watched the video in its entirety, it was much shorter than the video we had received, uh, than the video that's been played in this trial. There was some, a bit at the beginning that was played here in which Ms. Heard is um, seemingly sort of sitting at the camera, and then there's a bit at the end where she's seemingly snickering and looks at the camera. That part was not present in what we received. So he's literally saying that a Amber or whomever cropped out the segments that make Amber look bad. I mean, this is huge, huge problem for Amber. In this case, it was not edited um, as I was staring at the machine and edited it and present for the entirety of receipt to publishing. While you worked at TMZ, did you ever receive any communications from Mr. Depp or his camp? I did not. So then we go to Elaine's cross-examination of him and, oh, child. You know this case is being televised, right? I, I am aware that there are cameras. And so this gets you your 15 minutes of fame, doesn't Objection, it? Objection, Your Honor, argumentative. <laughs> I, 
I can ask that question. I'm sorry, but if your attorney is resorting to having to accuse multiple witnesses against your client of just trying to get their 15 minutes of fame, or as Amber called it, the Johnny Show, I feel like you do not have a good defense. Um, so I stand to gain nothing from this. I'm actually putting myself kind of in a target of TMZ, a very litigious uh, organization. TMZ filed emergency orders trying to prevent him from being able to testify. And I'm not seeking any 15 minutes here. Though so you may, you're welcome to speculate. I could say the same thing by taking Amber Heard as a client for you. Somebody said I'm an honorary petty university, okay? He just let, he let all of his pettiness just shine through in that boom, bap, bip, bap, bip, 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 bop, spam. I heard Mr. Tomain testify that the cabinet video was posted 15 minutes after TMZ received it. Yes? That's what I heard him say. And that this could only have been possible if the video was received directly from the source. Yes? I heard him say that. I don't know if that's true or if that's possible. Because it didn't come from me. I was Mr. flying. Tremaine so testified. It, 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 I know that's incorrect is what I mean to say. Another liar on the stand. I just know that that's incorrect. Right. And you heard Mr. Tremaine testify that TMZ owns the copyright to the cabinet video, right? That's news to me. The cabinet video you filmed of your then husband. Yes? The copyright ownership of that is news to me. I learned that yesterday. The copyright ownership cannot be entirely news to you because you were the original copyright owner. It's the cabinet video that you captured of your then husband. Yes? That is correct. I did capture that video. Amber then says something that got her into more trouble. You edited out the portions that made you look bad before sending it to TMC. You are very wrong about that. So that if I wanted Mr. to leak Depp information, I could have bad. done it in a more effective way a lot sooner and a lot more. Because I was exactly living with a mountain that, right? of this evidence. If I wanted to leak it, I could have done a lot more with it. I thought you testified oh. earlier in this trial that you didn't know how to leak things. Remember I don't. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. It's brutal. It is brutal. I, I don't know why someone would say, well, if I wanted to leak something, if I wanted to blah, 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 I would have done it more effective and better, blah, 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 blah. That to me is a strange thing to say, but then she did testify previously that she doesn't even, she wouldn't even know how to do that. And it was good that Camille caught that there because again, that's another inconsistency in Amber's testimony that could very well come back to haunt her. And then let's not forget what was also shown in court was Amber's deposition that happened right after this video was leaked. <laughs> and Amber says this. So that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't. She literally just said that TMZ was notified. This is like what a school child when they say, <gasps> That's how, like, that's what it... We gonna move on. The jury saw that too. Now I wanna take a look at some of Dr. Curry's testimony in regards to Dr. Hughes's testimony. She stated that she administered 12 tests. Um, in actuality, she used eight checklists Half of those were symptom checklists. The other half were checklists about experiences that people can have with domestic violence. And those are not appropriate for forensic settings. They are easily exploited. If you're handing somebody a checklist that lists every single symptom of PTSD, you're essentially teaching them all the little nuances that we're looking for to give that diagnosis. That is a huge problem, I'd say, for Amber's side. Dr. Hughes had diagnosed Ms. Hurd with PTSD back in 2019 when she began testing her. It wasn't until two years later, more than two years later, 10 days after I administered the CAPS-5 with Ms. Hurd, that Dr. Hughes held an impromptu evaluation session remotely with Ms. Hurd and administered the CAPS-5. She had previously diagnosed PTSD without using what we consider to be the gold standard PTSD diagnostic interview. Again, when we're doing a forensic evaluation, it is an important responsibility and part of our ethics and professional standards are that we document everything to allow for transparency and full judicial scrutiny. That is particularly damning in my opinion.
Next, there was, a, again, a little sleeper witness um, in, during, I believe, rebuttal uh, in regards to Australia, where a doctor was testifying in regards to Johnny's injury on his finger, and if that could have happened with, you know, the throwing of the bottle smashing on the finger. And in the cross, Amber's attorney stated that Amber has never testified to knowing what happened to Johnny's finger, which just is not true, as I showed in my deep dive. So I'll play you some clips. You're, you're actually aware that, that Amber has said she didn't doesn't know how he lost his finger. She's never actually given an explanation for how she thinks he lost his finger. Now let's take a look at what she says in the U.S. trial. Um, I figured out he was missing a finger. He kind of held it up, and I said, "What did you do? When? Like, what? What did you do? When?" And I realized in my head that there had been many hours since this probably happened, assuming that that was the happened with the phone. I'm gonna go back to a witness, Miss Sexton, who I believe was Amber's acting coach, ironically. And here's what Miss Sexton testified to in the UK trial. She was asked, when Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard went to Australia, did she tell you that she threw a bottle of vodka at him and that's what severed his finger? No, she told me that he had broken the bottle and cut himself with the bottle that he had broken. So this witness is saying that Amber told her that Johnny you know is waving around a bottle and it breaks and by him shaking it around that cuts the finger okay so that is story number two according to a witness now if we go then to Amber's witness statement before the UK trial she says the following there was an old-fashioned mint green and cream house phone mounted on the wall next to the fridge at some point he picked it up smashed it against the wall next to me right next to my face he was smashing it so hard and so many times that it was smashed to pieces she gives no account of the phone being being the thing that cut his finger. Miss Hertz testified in this trial and previously that she saw him smash a phone to smithereens, a wall phone. Correct. But she doesn't know if that was what caused him to lose his finger. If we go to Ben King's witness statement about this, they cite an amended defense for Amber. And in her amended defense, uh, she specifically says right here, uh, the, the claimant, which is Johnny, Johnny ignored her, continued to hit her with the back of a closed hand, and slammed a hard plastic telephone against a wall with his other hand until it smashed. While he was smashing the telephone, Johnny severely injured his finger, cutting off the tip. Once Miss Heard admitted managed to escape from Johnny, she barricaded herself in the bedroom. Now she is saying in an amendment, oh actually it was when he was smashing the phone. When she then later testifies in the UK trial, she says the following. The attorney is speaking, you refer to a phone on the wall next to the fridge. At some point he picked it up, smashed it against the wall next to you, right next to your face, smashing it so many times hard that it was smashed to pieces. It is at that point that you have said in the earlier documents, and I can take you back to them, that he sliced his finger, to which Amber replies, I do not know, I did not see his finger go off. The very next day in her testimony, the attorney asks her, it is inconceivable, is it not, that the injury, that this injury was caused by Mr. Depp smashing a phone on the wall? You have just lied about it, have you not? Amber responds, absolutely not, Miss Laws. I was there, I watched it. She literally, the day prior said, I do not know, I did not see his finger go off. And the very following day, I was there, I watched it. Miss Hertz testified in this trial and previously that she saw him smash a phone to smithereens, a wall phone. Correct. But she doesn't know if that was what caused him to lose his finger. I was there, I watched it. There's so many stories surrounding this and none of them really match each other. Now, here's something that is potentially damning for Johnny's case. Again, these little sleeper witnesses. This is Amber Heard's former makeup artist, and she testifies to being a witness to seeing injury to Amber's face. Based on your best recollection, what injuries did you see on Miss Heard on December 16th, 2015. Amber had a slight decolor uh, discoloration on both eyes and on the top of a bridge of the nose. Hold on, uh, and I do believe the right eye had a little more of a gash right there. 
it wasn't that strong, it wasn't that swollen, but it was definitely some blue and yellow discoloration there, mainly on the inner corner and a little more here. And then she had on the right, on the right lip, as I said earlier, I'm not sure the exact medical term, but it looked like a split lip or like a gash. Did you ever see Miss Hurd's lip bleed um, on December 15th or December 16th? So, you know, we do have a, a third party witness who honestly, I don't see her having any skin in the game. She is not an employee of Amber's and she is testifying to having witnessed injury to Amber's face. And she is not the only one to have testified saying that. Is it your testimony that she showed you photos of her injuries shortly after the alleged event? Somewhere in the period while she still had injuries, she showed me photos, but she also came in and showed me in person. And what did she show you in person? Bruising on her face. This is something that the jury will have to take into consideration. Now we also have, of course, the mirror evidence, the pictures that Amber took of the mirror. Now this uh, has been alleged and I believe acknowledged that Johnny wrote this stuff here. And Amber has been accused of writing this to which she vehemently denies writing this at all. This handwriting right here is far different than this handwriting here. It's obviously written in the red lipstick. But what I did not hear uh, anyone bring up in cross is the word babe here. Amber regularly has referred to Johnny as babe. I have not once heard Johnny refer to Amber as babe. Let's play this recording just for a little recollection. Babe, you're not punched. This is transcribed incorrectly. This should say babe because she very clearly says babe, you're not punched. Listen to it again. Babe, you're not punched. So when it says, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe. That to me could strongly suggest that yes, Amber did write this. And there it is. I. Uh... Then we have what I consider to be some of the most scathing testimony, the most damning testimony towards Amber Heard, particularly in regards to her character and credibility. I am talking about the back and forth bickering that Amber decided it was necessary to have in regards to uh, making a pledge versus a donation of the charity money to the ACLU and the Children's Hospital. Now, I already did a deep dive specifically on this, so I am going to play some of that right here. You spoke about donating your divorce settlement on a Danish TV show, correct? Uh, uh, seven million dollars in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. ACLU is a human rights organization. Sorry, ACLU is a prominent, um, uh, organization, nonprofit organization in the United States. Yeah. It's called the American right. Civil Liberties Union. And, right. and. Well, more power to you because that's, that's something that I've never I heard. I wanted of, uh... nothing. Mm. Mm. I wanted nothing. This interview was in October of 2018, right, Ms. Heard? I don't recall when it was. A $7 million divorce settlement was paid to you in full by February of 2018, right? That's correct. Paid in full February. 2018 and then lo and behold on December 18th so a month after uh, she said on this the, the Dutch show that it was all paid to charity she then comes out a month later with the op-ed piece so in October of 2018 you had received your entire seven million dollar divorce settlement yes you that, agree with me that is correct so in this October 2018 interview you said that you had quote donated mm-hmm there she goes her entire divorce settlement to charity right that's correct and that is a lie <laughs> it's not it's not true it is not true and in fact your exact words were quote seven million in total was donated to there it split is it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles there it quote, is right that's, that's correct I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement that's when I pledged it right then Pledged. Oh, this is gonna get so bad. But you hadn't donated your entire entire seven million dollars settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. No. Okay. That that is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. That is to this day, Amber still has not paid in full 
either of those charities. Dial 1-800-ROAST-A-BITCH, here we go. Sitting here today, you have not donated the $7 million, donated, not pledged, donated the $7 million divorce settlement to charity. Boom, roasted. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They but do I the don't, same thing. Heard. <laughs> I use pledge and donation synonymous. They are not synonymous <laughs> words. Listen to Camille's response. Look at her face right here. She is about to obliterate with one another. They but do I the don't, Miss Heard. <laughs> But I don't. This is Amber Heard's actual pledge form to the ACLU. So here we have, she has not, we are what? We are now in 2022 here. Payments here have not been made. And then what's even worse about this whole thing is that Amber is supposed to sign here by my signature above. I pledge to fulfill this commitment according to the payment schedule shown. And bitch, them shits is blank, okay? That bitch is a blank ass clean sheet of paper. Not a signature is on there, your honor. I call into question all of this. Amber did not pay the charities what she pledged to pay them, but she literally lies about this on the stand. And I would think as a jury member, I would be looking at this and thinking, well, shit, you very clearly are not being honest. You're very clearly lying. And it's almost to the point that I kind of feel like you're insulting my intelligence. Even if I want to believe your stories. Her going out of her way to lie, I think insults the jury's intelligence, the judge's intelligence, and everyone who's witnessing it, and I think goes to destroying her credibility. And the jury could very likely say, if she's lying about this, she could be lying about everything else. In the end, she walked away with $7 million without any tax liabilities, which she said she was donating to two charities. The ACLU, they got less than a million dollars from her. And the Children's Hospital, they got $250,000. But that didn't stop Ms. Heard from telling the world that she donated everything. Because remember, she wanted nothing. Now, we're gonna get into some other texts that I have not heard much focus on. So this is a check text exchange between Amber and Steven Duders. Steven was with Johnny uh, during and after this alleged incident, and Amber was trying to like kind of get some updates. So Steven did not testify in the US trial. There are some inconsistencies with his testimony in the UK trial, which is a whole other problem. And so I'll read you a few points here. Uh, so he says, hey, he's up. He's much better, clearer. He doesn't remember much, but we took him through all that happened. He's sorry, very sorry, and just wants to get better, which allows us to make him follow up on that promise. Now, the first thing here that I would say is an issue for Johnny is uh, his Steven Duder saying that he doesn't remember much. I think a lot of people forget that if somebody is mixing quite a few illicit substances and the prescription medication, which we know from Johnny's doctor, that was something that did happen, that can have a pretty significant impact on the brain's ability to remember things. That is a criticism that the jury will have to take into consideration. And then Amber says this, look, he thinks he doesn't deserve this. Obviously he has no idea what he did or to the extent that he did it. If someone was truly honest with him about how bad it really was, he'd be appalled. That implies that other people witness something that happened. The man Johnny is would be humiliated and definitely wouldn't say to me that he doesn't deserve it. I don't know what this it is. Did she retaliate? Did she yell at him? Did she demean him? What is this it? That's what I would be asking. I'm sad that he doesn't have a better way to really know the severity of his actions yesterday. Unfortunately for me, I remember in full detail everything that happened and Duders responds, it was disgusting and he knows it. He was appalled when I told him he kicked you, he cried. Do you have his assistant, Duders, saying that Duders told Johnny that Johnny kicked Amber and that Johnny cried when he heard what he had allegedly done. Duders later in his testimony in the UK testified to saying that he never witnessed Johnny do anything physically abusive towards Amber. So I'm sure Duders could claim that he was just uh, placating Amber, but these are the facts that exist. And so how does that shape your opinion one way or another for Johnny or Amber? 
Now we all know of the text messages to Paul Bettany in regards to, you know, the, the witch's hunt and burning and all of that stuff. It is incredibly graphic. That can be seen as very damning to Johnny, but at the same time I think he also gave the explanation that he has dark humor and that was uh, something that was shared with a friend and not directly to Amber, so I don't think that it can necessarily go to prove abuse to Amber when she was not the recipient of those words. But I do want to point out a couple of things that, like, people have not talked about that I just personally find a little troubling as far as if we're considering like character elements. This is a message that Johnny sent where he's talking about I'm gonna properly stop the booze thing darling and then he says and what do you get? An angry aggro racial slur right here. So he has freely dropped a racial slur here. Now this is a racial slur obviously against uh, Native Americans. I did some digging into this and I found some articles like where he had been a adopted into a Native American family uh, because he appeared as the character Tonto. There was this other one that no one seems to want to be talking about, um, but in a text, uh, this was in David Kipper's deposition testimony that played in the trial. Johnny wrote, forgot to tell you, had a hopefully very positive and free of ego squawk with Amber last night that went very well. And then I shot a few Negroes in a club on Sunset Boulevard using racial slurs. I feel like if someone, I don't know, James Charles text this to someone and it leaked, like he would be canceled yet again. Like it's just weird to me sometimes we pick and choose who it's cool to like be using racial slurs and who it's not cool. And I would say, you know, insinuating that I shot a few Negroes in a club on Sunset Boulevard is a pretty terrible shitty thing to say. Completely unnecessary, never would that be warranted in any conversation, ever. Now, I want to point out something in regards to the cell phone incident. This was the last alleged uh, uh, abuse that took place before Amber, uh, a day, two days later, filed for the divorce, and then shortly after the TRO and set this whole ass thing into motion. I was just combing her testimony for something else, and I saw this, and it really caught me off guard. I don't know if anyone else has, has talked about this from like a body language perspective. Now, if you remember, Amber submitted quite a few photos into evidence of her Face where she's alleging injury on the right side of her face. And then of course when she went in for the TRO and TMZ caught her, there was the dark bruising that was shown on her cheek. When she testifies to that incident, look what side of her face she motions to being injured. You can have, you, you take her, you can have her. And he, with that, picks up, just pulls his arm back with the phone and throws it at my face. Hit me right in my, it felt like my, my eye. I did not see this before, but she motions three times to the left side of her face, indicating that that's where the phone hit her face. But of course, in the photos that were submitted into evidence, the injury is on the right side of her face. Now, could that be an honest mistake? Of course. But generally speaking, when someone is recalling an incident of trauma that they lived through, subconsciously, your body is going to be motioning in sync with your words, and you're going to be motioning to a side that it would have happened on so it is very strange to me that three times she indicated with her body language that it was the left side of her face but then the photo suggested that it was on the right side of her face and I'm not sure why those two motions do not line up. Probably the, <laughs> the most damning piece of evidence I think for Amber's case, which it's not the most salacious, but it's also just like the most obvious. Again, this is a defamation trial, all in regards to the op-ed piece, and she has to be proven to have published or republished the op-ed piece. And Amber, when she tweeted, the op-ed piece literally says, today I published this op-ed. Honestly, <laughs> I think this is like no brainer to the jury. They're going to see this and literally these three words I think could be the end of Amber's case in regards to the defamation. Well, except that they do have to prove malice, which is going to be incredibly difficult. Malice is probably the hardest thing on the planet to prove in defamation cases. I don't know if the jury will get there with malice, but Amber literally says today I published. What if any ill will or bad intentions did you have or intend against Mr. Depp? None. It's not about Johnny. 
The only one who thought it was about Johnny is Johnny. There she says it's not about Johnny. Here's what she says on her final testimony. I know how many people will come out and say whatever for him. That's his power. That's why I wrote this op-ed. How many people will come out in support of him and will fall to his power? I have seen people do this time and time again. That's why I wrote the op-ed. You didn't... That's why I wrote the op-ed. Child. Okay, it is time for a kitty palette cleanser from the billing department. Everyone say hi to Automobile, aka Automo Jackson, aka Noodles, Noodle Boy, because he is long like a wet noodle, bitch. <laughs> Hi, say hi to everyone. A couple of things and then I will share my final thoughts. First of all, if you want to join us and celebrate your petty side, a Petty University, the freshman collection apparel is linked below. It is always open enrollment because those who petty stay ready. <laughs> couple of Twitter shout outs from my last doc where I deep dive and break down all of the lies and inconsistencies with the testimony about the staircase incident. If you haven't seen it, it is linked below. It is wild child. For shout out goes to Purple Cipher who said consistency is always key and while one side has a mountain of it, recognizing that there's inconsistencies on all sides is why I enjoy hearing Swoop's deep dives into this case. And second shout out goes to Vapid Pigeon who said, I avoided almost all talks about this case as people didn't bother to step back from their bias. Swoop is honestly the only person I trust to do this and although Amber's lies have been shown time and again in her videos, Swoop focuses solely on the case and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, I really, really appreciate appreciate that. Um, I've been trying to keep a more balanced focus on the facts of this case versus getting swept up in like the conspiracy theories and hatred that people have been showing, as I do think it's important in any conversation to, at the very least, listen to what both sides have to offer. That's why we have a trial. Oh, where you going, sir? You want to go play with the toys? I think he hears the other babies in the other room are playing. Do you want to go play? All right. Will you say, will you say see you later to everybody? Say see you later. If you want to be my next Twitter shout out, make sure to follow me on Twitter at SpankyV, linked below, and retweet this video right here. Also hit me up on Instagram, linked in the description. That's where I post most often and respond to a lot of DMs. Be sure to check my link in the description and download Fetch Rewards for free and use code SWOOP to get 3,000 rewards points instantly when you scan your first receipt. You're gonna love it, honey. As we await this highly anticipated verdict to come down, I, I hope everyone keeps in mind the possibility that it might not go the way you want. I think we should manage expectations here. In reality, the jury could hang and no verdict is reached, or Johnny could lose, Amber could lose, perhaps somehow they both could, although that's probably a little more difficult. While I've personally taken a lot of time to try and approach this the way a jury would, weighing the evidence of both sides, I know my own personal bias as a survivor does play a factor and it's incredibly difficult for me to get past the audio recordings of Amber saying she hit Johnny, saying she can't guarantee she won't get physical against him. That shit cuts, particularly to my core as someone who's lived through DV and SA. Now, putting our knowledge aside about mutual abuse and how that's not a thing, the jury might not determine that. They might not know that. So because of that, we have to face the reality that they might agree with that. They might see this as mutual abuse, whether that's a thing or not. That's what the jury will have to decide. If there is evidence to suggest that there was one single moment, just one, that Johnny was mentally, physically, verbally, or S abusive, then by law, Johnny should probably lose. Now, I think Johnny Depp's team has, without a question, outlawyered Amber's team. Their style and approach was more digestible for everyone watching. They broke it down easier, and they strategically helped held on to damning evidence for the end, which will be the freshest in the jury's mind, and that matters. You know, put Johnny and Amber aside for a moment. Let's just zoom out to a global. We have to remember that not every survivor has photos or video of their injuries. That's actually incredibly common for many reasons, mainly that they're afraid their abuser might find the photos and harm them more as a result. I've been there. Now, I've seen a ton of backlash 
against Amber for not having injury photos, but in reality, what many people don't realize is that she actually submitted quite a few more injury photos than Johnny did. Now, people question, are they authentic? That's up for your own opinion, that's up for the jury to decide. Again, there is concrete evidence of Amber admitting to abusing Johnny. I just want to make sure that we don't take this trial and weaponize it against the everyday non-celebrity survivor, you know, you and me out there. Let's not push that false narrative that if a victim doesn't have photos, they're inherently lying. That's a dangerous narrative. Instead, let's weigh the evidence, try to piece together the most logical story, and allow space for survivors to relate to this trial however they do, without further fear that they might be ridiculed and invalidated if they decide to come forward with their own story, which does deserve to be told. And in time, all I can hope for is that this continues to open the conversation around survivors, that we all understand that victims can come in all forms, that men can be victims, and that healing is complex but can happen with time. But you know what? Y'all got this. Class dismissed. Swoop! 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 Ah.